Watkins Ice Arena on a frigid Friday afternoon here in Boston. These two teams facing off for the fifth time over the past three seasons. They split over the past two years. My name is Seth Renski, joined by Matt Meisenbacher. And Matt, when these two teams play, you're always going to get a great battle. A pair of one goal games a year ago that went one to each side, two ties two years ago. And with 11 seniors on both of these teams, a little bit of bragging rights here late on in the ECAC season. Yeah, huge game for both teams here. And you see, you, you mentioned UMass Boston and Holy Cross definitely have a, the opportunity here to get some momentum going forward. And I wouldn't be surprised if this game goes 12 rounds. I think you're going to see two teams that are very capable both of stopping the puck and putting the puck in the net. So I think it's going to be a close game moving forward. We'll check out the pregame team stats right here. As you have two of the better scoring teams in the conference, Holy Cross coming in with 3.19 goals, 57 total goals on the season, good for tied for second most in the conference. Tamekin's not too far behind. The difference has been the defense. Tamekin's struggling a little bit as of late, giving up five goals in a 5-0 loss to Salve Regina. Holy Cross coming off a loss of their own, a 2-0 loss at Franklin Pierce. One thing to watch the special teams, Matt, the Beacons penalty kill has struggled a bit. Holy Cross very good as we check out the team stats. And that top line for Holy Cross is going to be dangerous for UMass Boston. Yeah, we mentioned Violet's one you're going to have to watch tonight. She's in, in 21 games played. She's got 24 points. Anyone that's averaging over a point per game is definitely someone who's got offensive talent. And especially as a freshman, definitely someone that needs to be watched after every time she's on the ice. Yeah, Mary Klimachewski leads the team in points. She'll be the other winger. Mackenzie Boardman centers that line. Alexandra Stevenson gets the start. She's tied for the team lead in save percentage and goals against average. Right now, we'll check out the all-time series between these two sides. It's heated up a little bit in terms of the rivalries. We talked about splitting those last four meetings. UMass Boston took a big 3-2 victory a year ago here on Senior Day as the Beacons scored three consecutive goals. Holy Cross got one in the final minute, but the Beacons were able to hang on. And right now, while we've got a chance before the National Anthem, we'll talk about our player to watch, Sarah Alonardo. She's back as a forward, is switched between forward and defense, but she's a player who's been pivotal in this her first year as a Beacon. Yeah, and that's what you call finding a way to be in the lineup every night. A player that can play both sides of the puck is quite rare, especially at this level. Someone who can play defense and offense, and she's just found a way to get herself in the lineup night in and night out. Look for her to be an impact player today. Yeah, she had a big game against Nichols College last Friday, scoring the game winner off a rebound. We'll check out the highlights right now as the fans here at the Beacons Ice Arena will go through the national anthem.
Welcome back to the Beacons Ice Arena. The teams huddling up around their respective benches. We'll check out the keys to the game while we have a second. And Matt, a couple of big things, especially that second one that's interesting, the line mashups. What do the Beacons need to do today to stick with this Holy Cross side? You just got to be warned of who's on the ice. Be cognizant of who's out there. And Coach Colleen Harris does a real good job of that all the time. You're going to see her try to get the advantage, get her scores on the ice against the line that may, might be struggling defensively, and that's going to generate some offense for the Beacons today. UMass Boston, their home white uniforms with blue numbers, blue uh, pants, and black legs. Holy Cross in the purple road uniforms with the white numbers and white stripes. The Beacons go from left to right here in the first period. It's Jess Salisbury out there with Alexa Capion as the Beacons' first line defense. Joined out there by Alexandra Carlos, the captain. Alyssa Sullivan, her senior roommate, first time we've seen those two play together in a while, and Jenny Curry, the third member of that front line as the icing is waved off for Holy Cross. The top line, Kara Violet, Mackenzie Boardman, and Mary Klimachewski. Defensive pairing, Izzy Baggy and Taylor McGee. McGee's the assistant captain, Baggy the lone all-conference selection last year in the ECAC East for Holy Cross. And in net, it's Alexandra Stevenson, the senior out of Loomis Chaffee High School in Connecticut out of Norwood, New York. She has four shutouts this year, a 7-4-3 and three mark for the Beacons. It's Kaylin Burke who makes that stop and will cover up a bit of a dangerous play there. And for UMass Boston, they've been such a team of swings this year. 5-0 and to start the year, a seven-game winless streak. Had some big wins here in the second half, but just four and six. And how imperative is it for UMass Boston to strike first against the Holy Cross team that clearly has a ton of firepower? Yeah, they just need some wins to get in the right mindset and the right, get some momentum going into the playoffs. And this is a huge opportunity for them here at home to take that advantage. Controlled by Cat Armstrong in the Beacons and Armstrong stripped of the puck. Picked up by Kelsey Goostray. Goostray can't control it. It's out into the neutral zone. D to D pass picked up by the Beacons. Kayla Smith will dump it in. Smith out there on the Beacons third line with Ali Bianchini and Michaela Fea. Easily the Beacons best line here in second semester. Most three players, a ton of speed between the three of them. Salisbury out of Rhode Island passing it forward. And Matt, UMass Boston without one of their normal forwards. Kayla Kiernan unfortunately is attending a wake for her grandfather today. So we wish the Kiernan family our condolences. And Absolutely. Chance for the Beacons to get a new face out there. Marin Brown will be the Beacons extra forward as UMass Boston goes with just five defensemen for today's contest. Pucks loose up top, controlled by one of the defensemen. This time it's Baggy. Baggy had 15 points to lead all defensemen last year. The freshman of Brantford, Connecticut. Control behind the net. It's the fourth line out there. Madison Schneider up top for Baggy. Baggy going over to... Taylor McGee, chance in front, Burke covers up. And through the first two and a half minutes, Holy Cross generating some chances down low. Yeah, the Beacons are puck chasing right now. Not really a good start, almost three minutes in here to the game. And you never want to be puck chasing. You always want to maintain your zone, and especially in the defensive zone. You start chasing pucks, you get out of position. Beacons need to smarten up. Boardman loses that face off to Carlos. The Beacons looking to break out. It's controlled by Curry, the former Colgate University player. Curry. Had the puck stripped away by Baggy. Gets it back. Shot from the slot. Big save from Stevenson. Carlos was in front of her. It's a pretty nice play by the senior. Yeah, that's a good shot there by Curry. She had Carlos in front of the net who was creating a nice screen. She pumps it right on net. And fortunately for the goaltender, was able to not only make the save, but not have a rebound. And Stevenson, you see here, the solidified starter for Holy Cross. She's got good numbers coming into the game. And definitely someone they're going to need to figure out how to solve her early on in this contest. Borman wins the face off back. Brought out of the zone. Here by one of the defensemen, Aaron Hall, does a nice job to generate a chance. Shot in front, Boardman's denied. Second opportunity knocked wide. Shot coming off the stick of Violet. Burke with another save, and it's brought out by Alyssa Sullivan. Unable to clear the zone there. Nice job by Violet to pin it in. Kelsey McIsaac behind her own net. She'll swerve, look to bring it in around the circle. Stripped of the puck once again. Carlos and Sullivan going back and forth. On to the stick of Klimachewski. Klimachewski tried the toe drag in front for Violet. Stop, second chance, and it's a score on the far side. I believe it's Boardman. No, it'll be Taylor Mc... Let's get this one right. Well, Seth, regardless of who it is, you see here, this is a Beacons team that just wasn't prepared at puck drop today. Here's the Holy Cross team that has come out swinging. They've generated some offense. I think Burke's probably got five or six saves at this point. 
Some of them were very challenging. You see there off that rebound, no chance back door. We'll figure out who it actually was, but Beacons definitely need a spark here. Maybe someone can get him some five-hour energy down there. Yeah, I believe it was Mary Klimachewski on the back side. Burke made two nice saves there, but Klimachewski all alone, and Klimachewski had the original shot to create a little bit of chaos in the Beacons, and then did a nice job of cycling over, getting into a good spot. Chance for Nicole Giannino, the second line center. Giannino over across, and it's a second goal this time from Megan Sullivan. And we talked about needing to get that first goal. Well, now the Beacons find themselves down by two before the Beacons PA announcer could even get through the first. And they're leaving Burke out to dry. She made the initial save and a backhand in front. Two Holy Cross players undetected. One of them was able to get a stick on it, tip the puck just as it was about to get to Burke. And here you see it. Beacons down 2 nothing at home. And if this doesn't change soon, they're going to need to take the timeout pretty early on here. Francesca Panarelli, the second-year captain, senior out of Shrewsbury, Massachusetts, picked up goal number one there. About to get to the second goal, and it was Giannino, the second goal for Holy Cross. Two goals coming in about a minute for Holy Cross, just four minutes into the contest. The Vikings in dire straits right now, trying to just get the puck out of their own end. Suzanne Meek, the co-captain of Alexander Carlos, nearly turned it over in a bad spot. It's out towards center ice, where it's controlled by Baggy. Baggy's pass right onto the stick of Chelsea Monahan. Monahan can't control around the boards, picked up by Brown. Brown tips it ahead for Meek. Meek out of Hackens, South Hackensack, New Jersey. Soft shot in on Stevenson. She'll glove it and hold on with Emily Howard playing in her 100th career game, charging towards the net. Well, Seth, growing up and playing hockey in New Jersey, I had a coach, Brian Mullen, who had a 13-year NHL career, and I was fortunate to play underneath him. And he used to always tell us, you can't win a hockey game in the first period, but you sure can lose it. And here you see, this is evident, down 2-0 early. If this trend continues, absolutely. And you said it, dire straits for the Beacons at this point. They need some momentum change here. Kara Violet picked up the assist on that first goal. Violet's 15th assist on the season. Easily atop the team, 15 assists, 25 total points in just 22 collegiate games. Icing coming in. The Beacons, it hasn't been all that. They did have that great chance with Jenny Curry. And just have to get one back, and we'll see the top line right now of Jane Morissette, Kristen Embry, and Katie Berry. One back to Salisbury. Salisbury's shot gets all the way through, but sent wide of the net. Katie Berry. Freshman out of Abington, Massachusetts, listed at 4'11", might not even be quite that tall. She showed some great hustle on that effort, trying to back check. Puck sent around the boards for Capione. Capione immediately met by a Holy Cross player. The puck bounces out right in front of Burke. Loose at the blue line, and Barry will speed it over to Morissette. Morissette onto the stick of Capione. She's got the red line, and she'll dump it in as the Beacons will get a change. Second line out there of Curry, Carlos, and Sullivan. Center cross as Holy Cross gets a change as well. It's Giannino hard towards the net. Giannino still working with it as she got through a couple beacons. Sent up top to Sullivan. Back down low, Giannino giving chase. Carlos gets a body on her. Picked up by Boardman. Sent down low by Megan Meskill. Meskill, pretty easy player to spot. She's listed at six feet. On skate, she's got to be at least 6'2", 6'3". Sullivan gains center ice, but she's pushed off the puck there, and she'll have to take it away from Megan Meskill. Send in front for Giannino. Giannino, the second line center. She's playing out there with Violet, though, to her right. Sends the pass to Violet. Backhand chance sent high and wide. Over the near side, it's Alyssa Sullivan. Sullivan can't handle the puck, though. Nifty little pass by Mackenzie Boardman as Holy Cross has been already shifting their lines up a little bit despite their great efforts. Curry sends it right into the skates there of Gene Goodwin, one of our two referees for today's game. Skating in with a ton of speed was Nicole Genio and got a stoppage. Yeah, it was very close to being too, play too many players on the ice there for the Beagans. The puck got caught in by the door and they were making a line change, but Seth, like you said, I mean, it's been kind of a rough start here, and already almost seven minutes gone by in the first period, down 2 nothing. Beacons have shown a little bit of life here, but there's definitely still puck chasing. They still need to calm down, stick to the script. Kayla Smith 
Sends a backhand dump into the Holy Cross zone. And Michaela Fay and Ali Bianchini will give chase. Bianchini forces the turnover. Pass in front for Smith. Smith tries to turn with it. Bianchini had a chance to deflect it home. Couldn't get the stick on it. Now it's Fea. A little bit too strong with the first touch. Salisbury sending it across for Capio. Plays it off the boards. She'll send it down low. Looking for Fea. Bianchini pinches forward. Puck sent around the boards. And Salisbury has it once again. Salisbury, soft little shot off the blades of Giannino, and Giannino will look to break out. Gets a nice little pass there from Emily Listner, but it's broken up just short of the Beacons blue line. Good stick Kale by Salisbury there. Kayla Smith skating one th versus three. Michaela Fayer comes over to help her out, and it's dumped out. And Matt, well, we've got a, a small second. Talk about big players coming up big. Giannino has a goal, breaking up her five-game scoreless streak as Suzanne Meek took a whack at it. We've already seen Violet with an assist. She's been huge. And Baggy, the all-conference defenseman with an assist. Francesca Panarelli, the captain. Holy Cross getting some big contributions for some of their best players. Yeah, they came ready to play, no doubt about it. This is a weird weekend for UMass Boston. Just the one game. They'll be off until next Friday when they host Franklin Pierce and then Senior Day next Saturday against the University of New England. For Holy Cross, they're off tomorrow as well before they finish at home against Nichols and then number four Norwich University. Scrum around the left of Kaelin Burke picked up by Kelsey McIsaac nearly stripped of the puck and she is but fortunately gets it back as a Holy Cross player ends up on the bench that's Katie Riley another one of the assistant captains for 15th year head coach Peter Van Busker. Pat Armstrong going D-to-D -D with Kelsey McIsaac. UMass Boston has struggled against this four-check pressure all afternoon long. Fortunate there is Meskill had to go back to her own end to play it. Well, the pace has been at an all-time high. Both teams are redlining right now, and usually that's not a problem for the Beacons. They can absolutely keep up with it. It's just today they've been chasing a little bit. Rather than reading the play, they're always one step behind. Friscotti ahead for Madison Schneider. Plays it in on Burke. Easily paddles that one away. Sent along the boards by Capione. First player to it is going to be Taylor McGee. McGee stripped of the puck there. Nice play by Jane Morissette. Morissette skating 1v2. Morissette has it broken up right at the blue line. Tremendous stick work by Izzy Baggy. Comes around just short of the Beacons bench for Jess Salisbury. Salisbury looking for a passing lane. Finds the stick of Kristen Embry who stripped of the puck. Dumped in. And Holy Cross, another line change here as they're keeping fresh legs out there. Salisbury onto the tape of Capio. Bad turnover shot. And Klimachewski is robbed by Kalen Burke. Huge save by Burke. Huge save by Burke. We might come back there, and that might be a game changer right there, a momentum swing, because that turnover is about as bad as it gets. You just cannot turn the puck over in the slot there with your goaltender out to dry. And fortunately for Burke, she comes down, cuts down the angle, is able to glove the puck. Nice save by Burke. Klimachewski, the leading goal scorer for Holy Cross this year. 13 goals, 17 points, good for second on the team. She's got 35 career ones. And that one, one of the better chances that she's probably had all season long, unable to solve the Beacons. Senior goaltender out of Franklin, Mass. Cat Armstrong will dump it in, giving chase is the Beacons' second line. Kept in by McIsaac, tapped in by Sullivan, and Stevenson forced to make the save. And there you see Sullivan. We mentioned before, 102 games played. I mean, in terms of experience, I don't think there's anyone else on the roster that can match that. And there you see just, she makes those nifty plays. She's got hands, she finds space, and there you see a simple shot from the blue line. She just gets a little bit of composite on there and was able to tip it on goal. Gene Eno wins the faceoff against Alexander Carlos. Holy Cross has been very good from the faceoff dot. Carlos easily the Beacon's best faceoff taker. Pass from Gene Eno comes all the way out. It'll be tracked down by Erin Hall, just on her own end of the on own end of the side of the red line. Now a shot from the circle, sent high and wide off the stick of Abenanti. On the far side, broken up by Carlos. It'll be dumped down by Panarelli. Already with one goal, her fifth of the season. She's got 14 career goals in 102 games. She and Sullivan with 102. Emily Howard for the Beacons playing in her 100th collegiate contest. Carlos able to get out of the zone, but right onto the stick of Panarelli, who will dump it down, and Holy Cross will send five new players out there. Nick Isaac playing it high off the boards, but right into the paws of Kelsey Goostrey. Center around the boards, the Beacons gave up two goals in the first four minutes of this one, and they're really still struggling to get their feet here in period number one. Seth, they're playing on their heels. They can't keep up with this pace, and in terms of puck possession, Holy Cross has dominated. Hopefully they can figure it out soon. You see them, they're still chasing the puck. Nick Isaac 
rams a Holy Cross player into the boards and then flips herself to the ice. Isaac working in there with Kayla Smith and it's flipped up right into the netting and we'll get a offensive zone faceoff for the Crusaders here. And Holy Cross will send the new five out there. Van Buskirk has got to like this way this game is started after the way last year ended. They got off to a 1-0 start and then were blitzkrieged by the Beacons in the second. Two goals and then a third by Emily Russell to start the third period in that 3-2 win. Bad turnover from the Beacons. Four white shirts around. It's still a chance off the side of the netting that time by Madison Schneider, the Fort Myers Florida native. Pass in front from Fay, and that one's off the mark. And it seems UMass Boston just a step slow. Eight. Their passing has been off the mark, and Holy Cross has nearly made this a 3 0 game on multiple occasions here in the latter stages of period number one. They're panicking just a little bit, and I think there's a ton of hockey left here. They just need to take a breath and Get back to their game plan here. Bianchini sends a shot, shot a little bit wide. Faye gets pushed to the ground. We'll see the Beacons head to the power play right now. Pretty easy call there as Taylor McGee went hard into the boards with Faye in front of her and the trailing referee immediately put the hand up. So the Beacons to the power play for the first time, but we talked about it. Holy Cross 88.3% on the penalty kill. It's not like it's gonna be a huge advantage for the Beacons. Yeah, but definitely a step now. They can actually take a breath, have the puck for a little bit and hopefully Get some shots on goal in this power play, but you mentioned it, the Holy Cross penalty kill at 88%. I mean, that's an astounding number. Obviously, being a man down is no big deal for them. UMass Boston, 14 of 68 on the year. Shorthand chance here for Holy Cross. Violet with the puck, stripped him, and a nice job by Cat Armstrong, the sophomore defenseman. Armstrong gets it back from Jenny Curry, and the Beacons will look to set up. 20 seconds already killed. Violet doing a nice job on the penalty kill thus far. Curry leaving it back for Carlos. Carlos over to Armstrong as the combination of Boardman and Violet, the two forwards out there for Holy Cross, completely confounded the Beacons. Shot a little bit high and wide off the stick of Sullivan. Curry looking for some help. Sends it down low onto the stick of McIsaac. McIsaac being badgered there. Around for Sullivan, double team. Sullivan doing some nice job on the forward check there against Panarelli. And the Beacons now getting set up, or at least aiming to with a minute seven to go on the man advantage. Sullivan from the goal line trying to send it in front for Emily Howard. Sent around, rather that was Kayla Smith and it's set down the distance of the pond by Chelsea Monaghan. And all that possession time started in the defensive zone. You saw Armstrong, quick puck movement to Carlos, quick up to Curry and they were able to possess the puck for a good 20, 30 seconds there. Salisbury with it, bringing it into the zone, needs some help, sends it up top for Smith. Kayla Smith, the Salve Regina transfer, onto the stick of Morissette, pushed off, and it's brought out of the zone this time by Izzy Baggy. 30 seconds to go on the man advantage, 6.18 to go in period number one. Two early goals from Holy Cross, one from Francesca Panarelli, the second from Nicole Giannino. And UMass Boston's been playing from behind for almost the entirety of this first period. Morris set onto the stick of Faya, down to 12 seconds to go on the man advantage. The Beacons still looking for their first shot on goal. Jane Morris set, trying to keep it away from Kate Riley, still fighting for it. Morris set comes away with it, shot into the glove of Stevenson, and we'll get a stoppage with one second left on the man advantage. Seth, the tendency is the puck moves faster than the player, right? So if you're UMass Boston, you actually use Holy Cross's speed as they, it's, it's their advantage, you use it as a disadvantage. So move the puck quickly, hit players on the stick, and you can actually turn that speed against Holy Cross, turn it on its head. Beacon's fourth line out there with just one second to go. Suzanne Meek joined by Emily Howard and Marin Brown. Howard gets the face-off win from Suzanne Meek, center on the boards, controlled by Capion. Capion over to Marin Brown on the far side, right along the goal line. Howard working against the pair of defensemen as the man advantage is over. Onto the stick of Meek. Stevenson knocks that one away with the blocker. Holy Cross almost breaks it out of their own zone, but a player goes down hard. That was Janino, who actually fell down on her way onto the ice there during the stoppage. So Janino struggling a little bit with her footing. It's Salisbury. Pass a little bit behind Marin Brown. Tempted dump in there by Panarelli. First one didn't work so well. The second one a much... Better effort, Salisbury onto the stick of Morissette. Morissette loses it, but gets it right back. Morissette behind Howard, able to keep control of the puck. Dumps it on Stevenson. Stevenson will hold on with Katie Barry providing a bit of pressure. 
Yeah, I like what she did there. Gave the goalie a little bit of snow. Always good to get the goaltender a little bit rattled. Most goalies don't like that, but we mentioned it before. Jane Moore set the freshman. She made a simple play before in the defensive zone. Makes picks her head up around the net. Makes a, takes a couple strides, moves the puck north. You always want to be going north with the puck, and that's a good veteran play by the Moore set to get the puck out of her own zone. Baggy around the boards, on to stick of Madison Schneider. Schneider had it stripped away for a moment by Morissette, gets it back, still skating with it. Tries a high dump that's knocked down by Armstrong at her own blue line. Armstrong evades one player, it's a foot race here, and she's not going to win it against the slightly faster Izzy Baggy. Dumped towards the Beacons blue line, looking for Madison Schneider. Now Schneider will come back and get it with Armstrong, the first player to it in her own zone. Armstrong avoids a little bit of forecheck pressure. Puck is sent right back towards her. McIsaac on the stick of Embry. Embry has it tapped away. Fighting to get it back, and she'll find McIsaac. McIsaac behind her own net for Armstrong. TDD pass onto the tape of McIsaac. Embry still fighting to get it out and finally does so, but it'll be dumped right back in by Izzy Baggy. Beacon's got to move the puck quicker. It's just a must. If they're going to get back in this game, they just got to move the puck quicker. Armstrong and McIsaac, normally two of the shorter-handed Beacons defensemen, but they've really struggled on this shift. Armstrong has it poked away again. The Beacons continue to try to attack this near side to get it out. And Holy Cross seems to be on to the Beacons' points. Puck loose in front. Still fighting for it now. It's Violet. Shot sent a little bit wide. Really knew what she was doing there. It just barely missed that far post. Beacons are fortunate here. The puck was knocked off. It's going to be a face-off in zone, but Holy Cross had all the pressure there. And you see the Beacons... They just really, they just need to take a breath, Seth. You see them, they're collapsing on their own goal and just giving Holy Cross 90% of the offensive zone here. They need to take a breath, relax. There's a lot of hockey game left. Yes, you're down 2 nothing, but a lot of time left on the clock. Get back to the game plan. Kayla Smith and Katie Riley in the faceoff dot that time. It was a pretty even faceoff. Comes out to the Beacons. Capion ahead for Michaela Fea. This third line has had a little bit of luck here in the first period, but... Really, none of the Beacons' four lines have generated too much pressure. Hard shot from the blue line. The rebound popped loose, but right on to the stick of Aaron Hall as Beacons didn't have a player anywhere near the front of the net. Capion will track it down, but the icing was waved off. Capion had one bad turnover earlier that nearly led to a goal. Sends it over for Salisbury. Salisbury has the puck stripped away, picked up by Kelsey Goostre. Salisbury trying to send it past Goostre. She's getting pinned into the boards. Picked up by Kate Riley. Two players go down along the boards. We're going to see a penalty. Be interesting to see who it is. I believe it's going to go against Salisbury. And, oh, it's going to go against Holy Cross, rather. Yeah, I couldn't see exactly what happened in the corner there, but it does look like Holy Cross is going to get a penalty for slashing. Anytime there's a scrum along the, on the, along the wall or on the boards, it can be a little bit unclear, actually, who gets called there. But here, another opportunity for the Beacons, especially with... 229 left in the first period, and we mentioned Holy Cross's penalty kill, but in all reality, the Beacons power play did generate a few opportunities, which is definitely a positive for them, and I think you're going to see here, they're going to need more of the same. 229 to go in the period, two minutes on the man advantage, and Jenny Curry, an early shot just four seconds in off the face-off win. And see, I don't mind that. You test the goaltender who's kind of been, ha you know, quiet. Stevenson hasn't really been called upon much. Get a shot on goal and test her. It's Kelsey Goostray to the box for two minutes. A nice job by Armstrong to play off the carom and keep it in. Armstrong will leave it back for Sullivan. Those two players joined by Carlos, Salisbury, and Curry. It's odd to see Jess Salisbury out in front of the net, but someone's got to do it. The Beacons changing up their look here on the power play. Puck knocked around. Carlos fighting to keep it in. Carlos over to Salisbury. Can't keep control. It's around the boards. Mackenzie Boardman can't quite reach out and get it. Curry around the back of the net looking for a player up top. Armstrong can't handle the pass. Just didn't get her stick down in time. And Kaylin Burke has to come out and play it in her own end. Armstrong over to Sullivan. Sullivan backhand flip to no one in particular. And Panarelli will dump it back into the Beacons end. Armstrong off the boards looking for Curry. Curry finds Morissette. Morissette will flip it into the far side looking to help the Beacons get in on the rush, instead it's dumped out and now Cappy almost up it in, but right to Panarelli, and the captain another successful dump with 49 seconds to go on the man advantage and now, Holy Cross can do what they really like to do, and four check in the Beacons end. 
Michaela Fea looking to get it out. Tries to get it ahead for Kayla Smith. The Beacons with two skaters still in their own end though. Smith working against Aaron Hall. Over for Mara set. Panarelli a chance for another dump and she will do so. And 25 seconds to go. The Beacons have time for maybe one more chance. It doesn't seem like they have the man advantage here. And it goes back to being able to move the puck. See there, two passes and we're, if Smith can get this deep, we're in the zone. Over to Alexa Capione. The Beacons though looking for a change here with 10 seconds to go on the man advantage. Pass right onto the tape of McIsaac. Her shot is deflected away. Michaela Fayette trying to track after it. Puck kept in there by Smith. 27 seconds to go in the period. The man advantage is over. Fea over to Suzanne Meek. Meek shot from the circle. Knocked down with the arm of Stevenson. Holy Cross looking to break out with 15 seconds to go in the period. They scored two early goals. Haven't been able to find the back of the net since, but haven't really needed to with their big advantage. Riley knocked loose. Five seconds to go. Capio will track it down behind her own net. GDD pass to McIsaac, and that should do it for period number one. A terrible first four minutes, and it didn't get too much better, Matt. Holy Cross jumped all over the Beacons, and without some key saves from Kalen Burke and maybe a couple shots going just a little bit wide, this could be a, a four, maybe even a 5-0 game the way the Crusaders have pounded the Beacons in their own end. Yeah, Burke came ready to play, and she might have been the only one. Holy Cross came out swinging. As soon as the puck dropped, they were all over them, and definitely a good period for them. And I think if you're the if you're the Beacons going into the locker room here, if I'm Coach Colleen Harris, I'm playing that Aaron Rodgers tape. Relax. Relax. There's a lot of hockey team left, for, a lot of hockey game. 40 minutes here. Yes, you're down 2 nothing. It was a bad period. Let's throw it away. Let's start over and pretend we have 40 minutes on the clock and get going here. Get back to the game plan. It's very simple. When the Beacons are able to move the puck, they're able to break into the offensive zone. They just they were panicking for most of that period, and that's what was creating a lot of those turnovers. Well, it was 1-0 a year ago on senior day after one period. The Beacons scored two in the second, earned a 3-2 win. We'll see if the Beacons can find another comeback bit here at the Beacons Ice Arena. We'll take a break right now. And we'll play you an interview with head coach Colleen Harris. And Colleen talked about the need to match up against that top line. The Beacons have done a decent job against that. And then we'll be back with our Beacons Broadcast Network intermission show as UMass Boston trails 2-0 after 1. Joined by head coach Colleen Harris about an hour before the Beacons take on Holy Cross. Coach, last year you guys earned a big 3-2 victory over Holy Cross here on your own home ice on senior day. The last four matchups have been very close. The two teams each scoring six goals. You have two ties, both teams with a one goal win. Why do you think this series has been so close? Holy Cross, a team with a lot of talent, uh, but you guys have been able to grind out a couple of uh, big points against them. We always show up big for this game, and I think it's always kind of at this time of the year, which is interesting, where we really recognize that we need to get these two points. and. Um, you know, we, we really need to fight for that playoff spot. Um, and not only the playoff spot, but home ice advantage. And I think we match up well against them. They're fast, we're fast, they're in our face, we're in their face. Um, it's, it's a good matchup, and I think it's become somewhat of a rivalry uh, for us in the past few years. Looking at their top line, three players all with 14 points or more. They're obviously one of the more gifted offensive teams. But on the other side, so are you guys. Do you maybe do a little bit more um, in terms of putting out your personnel against that top line? Or how do you work your lineup against with so many talented offensive players on that side? I think we definitely just have to make sure we're aware of who's out there when their top line is out there. Um, I'm confident in all four of our lines. I think we're going to be OK. And we're going to still be able to roll three to four lines throughout you know, 60 minutes of this game. But I also think that they are a little bit scary. So we might put out more of a checking line um, when they're out there and just try and kind of shut them down and then really attack when, when we have the opportunity. You guys went with the extra forward today and five defensemen. We've been balancing that act with Angela Dandro out of the lineup. Uh, what goes into that decision and sort of why did you go uh, with the extra forward today rather than going with six defensemen? Um, it's interesting. We sit here for hours after practice yesterday and we go back and forth over it with our staff um, last night and this morning. Even we wake up and we're still not sure who we want to go with. But we know that who we have in the lineup, it's possible to throw a couple kids back on D if we have to. If something happens, if we get a penalty, um, we have that. We have those options. So, um, you know, it's it's always a tough decision, and you know you're really picking it very wisely. But I think uh, I'm confident with the 
20 kids we're putting on the ice today. Three games left, all three home games. How do you guys go about getting into some kind of rhythm here towards the end of the season? Despite sort of balancing those wins and losses, you're still right in the thick of things for a chance to get a home off. Uh, home playoff game in the first round. Yeah, right now, I mean, we sit, if it ended today, we would sit at four, and that's, um, that's something big for us, but at the same time, we don't want to just settle for four. We want don't want to just settle for home ice advantage. We want to go out there and get everything we can. So um, it's been a grind the last month, I think, uh, you know, with the schedule and having to play at home and then go on the road. It's been a real grind for the kids, and getting back in school, all that kind of stuff has been a, a little bit tough, but I think we're ready now. We have three games left, and we're, we're focused. Um, and I think despite the scores we've seen lately, we're playing some of the best hockey we've had all year. Thanks so much for your time, Coach. Thank you. Welcome back to our Beacons Broadcast Network intermission show. We'll check out the first period stats right now. They look a lot more even than the play probably was. UMass Boston credited with one more shot on target than Holy Cross. Holy Cross had quite a few shots go just a bit wide of the net. Some good looks for the Crusaders in that first period. The two goals in the period coming 29 seconds apart. Francesca Panarelli, her fifth goal at 323. Kara Violet and Mary Klimachewski with the assist. Then at 3.52, it's an unassisted goal. Nicole Giannino forcing a Beacons turnover and putting it in. Very good start for Holy Cross. We'll check out the ECACE scoreboard right now. A couple other games going on. The one big surprise, Southern Maine leading Norwich 1-0 after one period of play. Clearly plenty of time left in that game, but that would be a monumental upset. It's the only other game that has a score thus far as we'll bring you the highlights right now of the UMass Boston women's basketball team. They had a game on Wednesday night, a huge victory over UMass Dartmouth, 63-61, an entertaining game in which the Beacons came back from 13 points in the second half to earn a big victory. They'll be back in action tomorrow as they host Plymouth State at 1 o'clock. It's the Battle of the UMasses. UMass Dartmouth tied for first in the Little East Conference. They come in at 16 and 5, 8 and 2 under first year head coach Matt Ducharme. And for the Beacons, come in at 13 and 8, 5 and 5 at Conference Jordan. And the Beacons get yet another offensive rebound. UMass Boston lost that first matchup by 10 at Dartmouth. They did own a big advantage inside as Morrison gets the N1 opportunity. Gets out top for Ronigan into the hands of Beth Castantini in the corner. Kane for the three, nothing Manette. That's a big three from Colleen Kane. Gary up top, finds Coutille, over to Cohen. 14 on the shot clock, leaving it for Ronigan, looking to drive by Murphy, contact and the foul. Holders without Geary or Matthew. Wide open, Hawkwater, the three is nothing Manette. Fourth three of the day for UMass Dartmouth. It's younger. Group maybe bringing a little bit of energy. Murphy the catch over to Edwards. Gets Ronigan up in the air. Can't get the finish. Murphy the rebound and the putback for Jordan. She'll take the three. Too strong. Rebound into the hands of Morrison. Leaves it for Nelson. Nelson draws some contact. Gets her own rebound. Draws the foul and one. She tried her hand at a deep two. Wide open Garrity. He's already proven she can hit it. Castantini. Nothing but net on the triple. Defensive rebound. Ballou over to Edwards. Edwards tries the shot, gets it to go off the glass. Nelson thought about it, Hawkwater came after her, leaves it off for Edwards, and she can't get the finish. Edwards gets her own rebound, puts it up, and one opportunity. And right now, you can feel the energy from the Beacons bench and some of the fans. Nelson sensing some space, over to Burstyn, looks for the three, it's up, nothing but net. Tajay Burstyn, points in five boards, including the go-ahead free throw, Garrity, Gets the loose ball, tries to kick it out for Ronigan. Six footer, another Manette. To give, they only have three. Murphy over to Burstyn. Had the open look, passed it up. Garrity got over and provided a little bit of pressure. Murphy will take the long two, and it falls. Up man to man right now. Ballou into the front court, 18 on the clock. The Beacons unable to score in the same situation. Burstyn three is up, nothing Manette. Tajay Burstyn the go ahead three. The Beacons lead is two. 
Good Kelsey shot. Garrity brings it to the front court. UMass Dartmouth timeout for UMass Dartmouth. Castantino inbounded to Garrity. Kane, Ronigan, and Fahey are also out there. Garrity keeping it herself over to Kane around his screen. Kane swings it down low for Garrity. Double team. The ball is loose. Jordan to the floor. The Beacons win. UMass Dartmouth, a huge Little East Conference upset. The Beacons, their sixth conference win that ties the most they have had in conference under Courtney Manningly, their 14th victory, their most under Courtney Manningly in her 16th season, their third straight win over UMass Dartmouth, but this was the most improbable. Five fifty-eight before the start of the second period. We'll take you around Beaconville right now. The women's basketball team, as I mentioned earlier, they're back in action tomorrow against Plymouth State University. The men's basketball team will look to make it two wins in a row as well as they host the Panthers at 3 p.m. Big men's hockey game tonight, the second of our doubleheader. The men's hockey team ranked sixth in the D3Hockey.com poll, seventh in the USCHO.com poll. Looking for their 20th victory of the season it would be just the second 20-win season in program history as they host St. Michael's College. And tomorrow, the indoor track and field team will take part in the Little East Conference Track and Field Championship meet. That one starting at 10 a.m. We'll bring you the highlights of the last time the men's hockey team played here at home. It was a thrilling 4-3 overtime victory as the men's hockey team defeated Babson College, who at that point was ranked ahead of the Beacons. Babson right now sits four points behind UMass Boston in conference play. The Beacons four points behind conference leader Norwich. So UMass Boston will look to see what happens tonight in that Babson-Norwich game that will be played over at Babson College. That's a 7 p.m. start as well. Could determine, well, it will determine whether the Beacons have a chance tomorrow against Norwich to earn at least a share of the regular season conference title. What separates UMass Boston from other schools is the fact that a large percentage of students commute. For me, it takes two hours each day to go to and from school, but every second has been worth it because the students that come here are serious about learning, they value their education, and understand where it'll take them in the future. This is what UMass Boston means to me. Well, we're seemingly having some technical difficulties with that particular video here. But 2.36 to go, we'll bring you some insight from myself, Seth Lorensky, and from my color man, Nat Meisenbacher. And Nat, just looking at some of the statistics, it was surprising to see the Beacons led in stats. But if you're a Beacons fan or if you're maybe just a fan of good hockey and you want to see this game get a little bit closer, what does UMass Boston need to do in period number two to maybe gain a little bit of that advantage you talked about the swings in a hockey game right now there hasn't been a swing it's been two big left hooks from holy cross and the beacons haven't recovered yeah i mean that was a tough first period if you're a beacons fan but this is where that senior leadership has to come over you need somebody to step up in the locker and say girls we've we have a good team around us we know we're fully capable we've been in situations like this before let's calm down get back to the game plan and work and take one shift after the next and that's really the key is the, is the shift afters the beacons had some good shifts especially from the 
Kayla Smith line, they put, were able to get some offense going, but they weren't able to follow it up with that shift after, and it just kills the momentum. So I think if you're a Beacons, especially the coaches and the, and the captains, if you're the leadership, rely on that, on that experience, come out in the second period, get a couple shots, and start taking it to the uh, Holy Cross Crusaders. One additional note from that first period, there was an assist added after we got the statistics. Megan Sullivan picked up the assist on goal number two. That's Sullivan's second assist of the year for the senior out of Brockton, Massachusetts, her sixth career point. Holy Cross has gotten some big contributions from their seniors, the Beacons 11 seniors. Looking to answer Mac, they're playing their final three regular season home games of their careers. This might be their final three home games of their careers, period. The Beacons can't find a way to generate some points. Beacons came into this one sitting in fourth in the ECAC East amongst Division Three teams that are eligible to play in the ECAC East tournament. But UMass Boston was sitting second heading into the break amongst all teams, D1, D2, and D3. And they've really struggled four and six here in January and February. And not the kind of first period that head coach Colleen Harris was looking for. UMass Boston will send out that second line of Carlos Sullivan and Curry. For Holy Cross, it'll be Violet, Boardman, and Klimachewski. Klimachewski and Violet both picking up assists as they add to their team leading totals. And Seth, the next goal is so important here. If you see Holy Cross get up by three goals, UMass Boston's really going to be climbing a mountain trying to get back into this game. However, if the Beacons get the next one, it makes it a 2-1 game. And everyone knows the most dangerous lead in hockey is a two-goal lead. So this next goal is very crucial for both teams. Played behind the Beacons net. It's controlled by Klimachewski. Klimachewski looking to get it over to Violet there. Two Beacons pinning two Crusaders along the boards. Pass on to the stick of Sullivan. Played it right just short of center ice. And they're going to call that an icing. Uh, Sullivan lost the race there against Izzy Baggy. And I don't mind that play. A little stretch pass, test the D, make sure they're awake there. Unfortunately, it wasn't able to connect to Sullivan. She probably was going to be able to get around the D and be all alone on a breakaway. But I don't mind that play there. Make a little stretch pass, test the D, see if they're awake early on in the period. Offensive zone faceoff. Boardman wins it back against Carlos. Hard shot. Burke able to make the save from the point on Panarelli. Already has one today. Salisbury playing with it behind her own net. Over to Sullivan, back to Salisbury. Her pass through traffic somehow makes it up way, its way onto the stick of Curry. Curry skating to the near side, looking to get some fresh troops out there onto the stick of Madison Schneider. Aaron Hall with it, stripped for the moment by Emily Howard, but Hall will get a little bit of help there from one of her teammates. Can't see them behind a fan who's Working her way back into the rink, that's Cara Violet. Marion Brown sends it out to the point for Salisbury. Salisbury playing it back down for Brown. Brown tried to tip it over to a couple teammates in front, stripped away, and it's brought out of the zone where Salisbury will dump it right back. And there we saw a good shift from the Beacons, a line change. Let's see if they can follow it up. Howard tried to keep it in the zone, unable to do so. McIsaac back in her own end, tape to tape, over with Armstrong. Armstrong, a dangerous pass through a couple of Crusaders players. Find its way onto the stick of Howard, who Tries to dump it in, but it's turned over right at the blue line. Tracking this one down is Emily Listner, the freshman out of Woburn, Massachusetts. Listner out there with Gene Eno and Abenanti on the second line for Holy Cross. The point for Sullivan. Sullivan over for Meskill. Meskill shot to the near post. Easy save for Burke. And Howard will wipe out as she tries to clear the zone. Does so, but it'll go for an icing. Yeah, good save by Burke there. They were able to clear the rebound, but... Here we see again, you know, UMass was able to get a nice shift under their belt, maybe a few shots on goal, and then the next shift, Howard with the turnover at the red line, and then Holy Cross was able to generate some pressure, and here you see an offensive faceoff for them with 18-01 in the second period. Gene Eno beats Howard there. Another hard shot from Meskill. Burke, another save on the near post. Meskill moves it six feet tall out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Peter Van Buskirk does a nice job recruiting. He's got players out of Minnesota, Alaska. That shot knocked away by Cat Armstrong. Could have been a really difficult save for Kalen Burke. Nice job by Armstrong to help out her goalie. Dumps into the zone right off the stick of Armstrong. Nice little toe drag. Tries to find Marin Brown. Instead, it's back to Meskill. On to the tape of Sullivan. 
And some tic-tac-toe pass and get it out of the zone. Aminanti on the far side trying to leave it for Giannino. Her shot a little wide. Now Aminanti on the wraparound bid right along the far post. Short changes for these teams in this second period, and that could be an advantage for Holy Cross in that they're already faster than the Beacons. Yeah, so far this game, but if the Beacons could wake up a little bit, and so far they've looked good so far in the second period, they can definitely match that speed. It's just a matter of getting up to that level. Strong forecheck pressure by Giannino on Kayla Smith. The Beacons struggling to get it out of the zone. Now it's the third line. Monahan out there with Gustre and Riley. Finally, Smith comes away with it. Tries to get it to Bianchini, who brings it out of the zone, but it's dumped right back in off the glove of McIsaac, and Armstrong will play it. Armstrong carries it off the boards, ahead for Michaela Fea. Fea skating two on four, has Bianchini instead. A glove save by Stevenson, the shot going wide, and will get a whistle and an offensive zone face off for the Beacons. And a simple play there leads to a two on one for the Beacons. Armstrong didn't have much of an option, and this is something that defensemen are taught early on in hockey is if you don't have anything else, go off the glass, bump it up to the forwards. And fortunately, Faye was there to pick it up on the indirect pass and go in two on one and get a shot on goal. Morissette ties up a Crusader on the face off. Salisbury sending it purposely wide, looking to get a little bit of help. Alonardo out there with Morissette. And Barry, so the Beacons changing things up a little bit. Alan Ardo is supposed to be one of the four forwards on the fourth line, but they're putting Alan Ardo out there, maybe gaining a little bit of size and strength. Sarah Alan Ardo, certainly a bit more physical than Kristen Embry or Katie Barry, who were originally out there with Morissette. Chance the other way, Madison Snyder in the fourth line, right winger, gets a shot off despite Capione in there, and they're going to call it a goal. What a turn of events there. Madison Snyder was skating in one on two and somehow got the shot off and Burke unable to make the save. Yeah, she was able to stop the initial shot, just wasn't able to cover it in time. And Holy Cross was right on the doorstep, ready to poke it home and the rebound. And here you see a three nothing lead now for Holy Cross. Should be Snyder with the goal. That's her first goal of the season for the senior out of Fort Myers, Florida. Sixth career goal in 64 career contest. We'll see if there's an assist tacked on. But it looked so innocent. The Beacons had numbers back. Snyder, the fourth line winger, yet to score a goal this season. In fact, that fourth line had generated just two goals all year, but this Holy Cross team proving they just wanted a little bit more than UMass Boston. Now Curry with Sullivan out in front, sends it in. Stevenson able to cover up with Alyssa Sullivan banging on the doorstep. And a shot on goal by Curry there. She was on her backhand. I think she was trying to look to go forehand, wasn't able to. Good job by her to at least get it on net. And Sullivan was there looking for a rebound. There just wasn't one. Good job by Stevenson to cover it up. Kayla Smith out there against the top line for Holy Cross. Face off one back to Izzy Baggy. Baggy around the boards. Picked up by Allie Bianchini. Bianchini out to the point. McIsaac looking for a shot. Set wide. Kayla Smith was being tied up. Couldn't get a deflection on it. Controlled by Violet. Violet, cross ice pass onto the stick of Taylor McGee. Now out ahead for Klimachewski. Klimachewski ahead for Boardman. Boardman one on one with the goalie. Burke, a great kick save. Great save by Burke there to keep this a 3 0 lead. So Schneider, the unassisted tally. Bianchini across the blue line over to Kayla Smith. Smith will cycle it down low. Faya giving chase against Taylor McGee. McGee gets there first, will send it down. Armstrong tracking after it, and that should go for an icing, and it will. And the Beacons get an opportunity in the offensive zone here, but just an unfortunate goal, to go, just to go back to it to a real second. You mentioned Seth, kind of an innocent play, a shot on goal, and I think Burke was going to cover it, and on the replay we have here, it looked kind of like her, her feet almost got taken out from under her. She might have slipped just a little bit, and that half second gave enough time for Schneider to be able to poke it home for the, for the goal. Marisset wins the faceoff over to Barry. Now it's Karams off the boards. Over to Klimachewski. Klimachewski skating one on four against the Beacons. Able to push off Barry. Tries to leave it behind her for Kara Violet. That would have been a tremendous play. Fortunately for the Beacons, they had a couple players in front of that pass. Boardman onto the stick of Hall. Over to Klimachewski. And that top line will take a break for Holy Cross. Leading by three. Capion whips on the pass. Backhand now to Barry. She couldn't handle it. Onto the stick of Listener for the second line. The Beacons are going to be called for a trip. Katie Barry, I believe, is the guilty party. And 
Now Holy Cross, after killing off two penalty penalties in the first period, will head on to the power play for the first time today. Yeah, Barry was trying to take a swipe at the puck, get it away from the slot area, and unfortunately she missed, and what she connected with was a skate, took the legs out, and she's going to sit for two minutes on a trip. Holy Cross's first power play opportunity of the day on the season. They're 23.3%, 17 of 73. The Meekins, 59 of 77 on the PK this year. 766 is its Barry off at 14.03 of the period, trailing by three. Chance in front, hard shot from Hall, swiped away. A nice job by Capion, who hasn't had the best of games. Controlled by Panarelli, up top for Hall. The attempted deflection there is a little bit off the mark from Izzy Baggy. So three defensemen out there on the power play to start for Holy Cross, and they created a great opportunity. Cara Violet, struggling to find the puck, has Emily Howard all over her, comes away with it. Violet leaving it back to the point for Baggy. Baggy and Violet going back and forth. Back out top for Baggy. Baggy sends a pass off the boards, looking for teammate in Boardman. Boardman able to pick it up. Violet up top for Baggy. Baggy passes up the shot to Violet. Violet shot through the legs of a couple players and wide. Onto the stick of Taylor McGee, just onto the ice. McGee over to Baggy. 40 seconds to go on the power play, 12.40 in the period. Violet up top for Baggy. Baggy will take the slap shot. Tipped wide there off the stick of Klimachewski. Klimachewski was wide open on the far post. Violet finds a player in the slot. That's McGee. Over to Baggy. Baggy will pass up the shot to Violet on the near side. Violet looking for a teammate. Shot a little bit high up the stick of McGee. Down to 20 seconds on the man advantage. Holy Cross has completely pinned the Beacons into their own end. They're totally collapsing on top of their goaltender. Look at how much room they're giving Holy Cross in this power play. Baggy to Violet. Pass a little bit off the mark this time with nine seconds to go. Sends it down low for Boardman. Boardman's pass around for McGee. Tapped away by Sullivan. Sullivan can't take it away from Baggy. Baggy will send another shot in. Burke the save. Roofed a little high by Violet. And the man advantage is over. Holy Cross with two minutes of domination but nothing to show for it. Kara Violet getting tied up there by Jess Salisbury. Fortunate to not be called for the hooking. McGee up top. McGee will cycle it down low. Didn't have a shooting angle. Over to Kara Violet. Salisbury once again being physical with Kara Violet, the leading, goal, leading point scorer for Holy Cross. And now the pass in front by Taylor McGee, and we're going to get a stop it. Smart whistle by Burke there. It's a way to cover it. She knew her team was dead tired after the penalty kill. You can see them. They're hunched over going back to the bench. Smart whistle to get a face off and get a line change. And definitely, Beacons absolutely have to win this draw. Good job by Carlos as she does. Carlos working against the third line center and Kate Riley. The Beacons, though, not out of danger yet. Still have to get it out of the zone. Carlos has a little bit of room. She'll get it out of the zone. Skinning out there with Jane Morissette after the penalty kill. Hard shot, but Stevenson up to the task as she slides over to her right and kicks it away. Fighting in there is Curry and Carlos. Curry gets it back from Carlos in front for Morissette. Morissette couldn't get a stick on it. Good little look there from the line that hasn't played together all season, all day, but out there after some changes because of the penalty kill. Morissette skating with it, being badgered there by Megan Sullivan. Morissette trying to find it amongst her blades, getting pinned along the boards with 10.55 to go. Now she's joined in there by Curry and three defensemen for Holy Cross. Referee's not blowing the whistle yet. Fighting to get it is Megan Sullivan there for Holy Cross, and it's finally brought out by Kate Riley around the boards to the far side for Chelsea Monahan. Monahan can't control it with Kayla Smith out there for the Beacons. UMass Boston took advantage of the line change with Holy Cross unable to find the puck. Curry struggling to find it against Maskell, who just towers over everyone out there for UMass Boston. They don't have a player over 5'10 on their roster. Beacons get some more fresh legs out there. The entire Third line of Smith, Bianchini, and Faya have made their way out onto the ice for Colleen Harris. It's Bianchini sending it around for Smith. Faya camped out in front, but it's picked up by Monahan as Faya was taken out of the play. Monahan skating 2v2. She'll look to dump it, struggle to find it. A nice job by Armstrong to get her stick in. And now it's behind the Meekins goal line with Kale Smith, the first player to it. Smith back and forth with McIsaac. Smith being forechecked heavily there, and she will just barely get it out of the zone. No, they're going to say it was somehow kept in there by Aaron Hall, sophomore out of Pembroke, Massachusetts. Faya looking for some help. 
sends it off the boards and it will come out towards center ice. This one looks like it's not going to make it as Stevenson came out to play it either way. That'll eliminate any kind of icing call. Controlled by Madison Snyder who had the lone goal of period number two. Unassisted goal, about four minutes into the second. Deacons nearly turn it over right near their near post. Picked up by Carlos who whiffs on the clear. Capion ahead for Carlos and it's dumped into the Holy Cross end where it's picked up by Aaron Hall. Hall over onto the stick of Jessica Friscotti. Friscotti's pass off the mark. Alexa Capion will go behind her own net looking for some help. Now she looks for the DDD pass onto the stick of Salisbury. Salisbury pushes it around onto the stick of Curry. Curry over skates it over to Carlos whose pass is into no man's land. Brought into the zone by Aminanti. Aminanti slips to the ice. Pass around for Capion who is stripped of the puck. Great play by Nicole Giannino. Up top, hard shot from Baggy. Burke came out to eliminate the angle and made another nice save. Giannino sends it out in front. Sullivan able to tap it away. Over to Capion. And Matt, when we get our next stoppage, as here's a difficult shot, finds its way into the jersey of a Holy Cross player. Tapped around. Sullivan will bring it out. This is easily the most dominating performance we've seen from a visiting team here at the Meekins Ice Arena all season long, men, men's or women's. Pass left for Jean Eno. She couldn't find it. Sullivan comes back into her own end. Sullivan over to Capione. Capione looking for reinforcements, and she'll be forced to dump it. There's nothing going right. Yeah, Seth, you said it. I mean, Beacons, it was really frustrating to watch here. They had a good shift with the Smith line, a lot of possession in the offensive zone. One turnover in the last, I don't know, two, three minutes have been down in the defensive zone. They just haven't been able to put enough shifts together to generate any type of offense. And I'm looking at the bench now. I see the two coaches kind of talking it out. they got to figure out something soon. Down 3 nothing here. Less than half of the game left. And they're going to need something soon in order to at least get one on the board. you got to start there. Holy Cross got the faceoff win. Megan Meskill with the shot, but it was knocked down by Alexander Carlos. Meskill with it right now. She'll dump it in. Slowed down by Jess Salisbury. Salisbury being peppered a little bit by Mackenzie Boardman. Sent around right back to Salisbury. The Beacons playing just five defensemen. I don't know if I've seen Lauren Tansby for more than one or two shifts. It's basically been four defensemen for UMass Boston the whole way as Tansy does make her way out on the ice right now alongside Cat Armstrong. Controlled by Embry who hasn't seen as many shifts here in period number two. Embry slips to the ice. Cara Violet tries to work her way through three players. Jane Morissette slips the ice, but able to dump it down below the goal line. Now Boardman trying to bring it out. Tansy unable to keep it in. Tansy, the senior out of Virginia Beach, Virginia. One of those 11 captains on the Beacons roster is a couple players slipped right at the blue line to the near side. Sullivan able to get it out towards center ice where Cat Armstrong steps up. I think Armstrong might be one of the better players the Beacons have had today, if not the best behind Kalen Burke. UMass Boston just getting very little from the team's 13 forwards today. That was a good shift here by Jane Morissette's line they generated, but here's Holy Cross again coming down the offensive zone. Klimachewski hugging that post just as much as Kaylin Burke is as she was ridden into the post by Kat Armstrong. And honestly, from this angle, you could see the puck still moving. The referees did a nice job. Bridget Wakis. And Gene Goodwin of not blowing the whistle, and Burke somehow able to keep that one out. Yeah, that was a good job by Burke. That's a tough position as a goaltender. You're kind of hanging on to that post for dear life, hoping the puck doesn't find daylight. And you see a four, and there's another goal, tip in front. Aaron Hall with the blast from just short of the blue line. It looks like it's going to go to Kate Riley, the senior assistant captain out of Natick, Massachusetts. And yeah, simple play. I mean, a, a one draw by Holy Cross. They win the puck, they move it over. Take a shot from the blue line and, uh, you know, just a tip in front, a missed assignment. You see the, the Beacons are still talking about it. Mis miscommunication and, and missed assignments. And uh, I think we may or may not see a goalie change here. Colleen Harris is looking at Mo Bradley and uh, she's talking to her, seeing what we're going to do here. They definitely need a spark of some sort. Well, at the same point, Bradley won't see any work until next Friday at the earliest if she doesn't play in today's game because of the lack of a Saturday game, you normally go Friday, Saturday, the two goalies have traded places. Mo Bradley, 
should be the Beacons' workhorse. The Beacons have a chance. Michaela Faye can't handle it. She's really struggled. Gave up five goals against Salve Regina after being a top 10 goalie in the country last year. Maybe this is a chance to get Mo going. There's no pressure in this game, already down four. Yeah, it's a tough spot as a backup goaltender, especially. I mean, <laughs> believe me, I've been there. Coming into the game cold, especially after warm-ups have, have taken place much, you know, a, a while ago, it's tough to come into a game that cold and be productive. But sometimes what it can do is generate a spark for your team. They know they have to wake up. It's always a bad feeling when your goaltender gets pulled, and a lot of times you can generate a spark that way. But the Beacons need something, and with this type of senior leadership, they, someone has to step up here and at least get a one on the board for the sec, for the end, before the end of the second period. Salisbury to Bianchini on the far side, sends it in front, looking for the deflection from Smith. She sent it behind the net, couldn't put it on target. Back to Bianchini, freshman out of Michigan. She slips to the ice. Salisbury steps forward, tries to send a shot through. Stevenson jumps on top of it. And Alexander Stevenson has done a great job at limiting any kind of rebound chances. Beacons had a couple times where they've had a player out in front that's looking for a rebound. Haven't been many rebounds available. Yeah, that's a goaltender that she's doing the job that she's supposed to do. You're making the save, she's supposed to stop and not creating any bad secondary opportunities for herself. And like you said, her rebounds have looked good all night. Carlos, the face-off win. A shot from Armstrong went off the face mask of Stevenson, able to make the save. Hopefully she's okay. That's never a fun one, but made it look easy. Yeah, I'd like to see that, especially at five feet tall. She's got to get to that crossbar somehow. And was able to, she almost left her feet to jump up in the air there and put it off the face mask. Nice save there by Stevenson. Then she got run into by her own player who ended up in the back of the net, but the way Alexander Stevenson's going, nothing's gonna phase her. Carlos gets bumped to the ground, a little bit of a check coming from her left side. Gets right back up, picked up by Armstrong. She'll chip it in. UMass Boston will get a change slowly right now as Beacon's just unable to keep up with Holy Cross. Jane Morris set out there with Curry and Sullivan. Curry was looking for the backhand chance, stripped of the puck by Baggy. Morris set off the boards, over to Curry, finds Morris set, hard shot set just wide, deflected off a defenseman. That was the Beacons probably best look of the day. Yeah, Morris set right in the slot and she was able almost one time, she got a lot on it just off the net. Nick Isaac working alongside Morissette to keep it in. Morissette sends a Holy Cross player to the ice. It's not enough. That was Katie Gogan. Haven't seen much out of this fourth line for Holy Cross. They do have a goal today. Madison Snyder scored the first of two goals for Holy Cross here in the second after Holy Cross scored two goals in 29 seconds in period number one early on. Kristen Embry can't keep her blades up that time. It's into the Beacon's end. Salisbury giving chase. They're going to wave off the icing despite Salisbury's best efforts. We saw a good shift there by the Beacons to we'll see if they can follow it up here with this uh, second line. You see Meek out there with Embry and Alonardo. See if they can follow it up and get back to back good shifts here. Yeah, it seems that Embry has been sent down to the fourth line and they're putting, uh, they, they're just switching up their lines all over the place trying to get something going. Salisbury can't handle it. Over to Tansy. Tansy onto the stick of Embry. Embry finds Meek, and the Meek is able to break out. Now Alonardo has center ice. She'll dump it in and head to the bench. Meek giving chase against the much larger Megan Meskill. Meskill able to push off Meek ahead for Sullivan. A nice job by Marin Brown to step in the way of that pass. Now it's Meskill behind her own net. Able to get it over this time to Sullivan, brought out of the zone, but Salisbury will dump it right back in with 2.29 to go in the period. And this is the first time I've seen two good back-to-back -back shifts from the Beacons. You see Howard hard on the forecheck. Beacons actually have some life here, and it's good to see they're generating some opportunities, just need to get some uh, shots on goal. Kayla Smith retrieves the loose puck, has to bring it out of the zone. Salisbury tries to dump it in, but right off the stick of Meskill to give Holy Cross a chance to bring it into the Beacons' end. Salisbury with it, tries to find a teammate, instead it's too strong for either Fayer or Howard, who are the two four checkers out there for the Beacons. Francesca Panarelli, who had the first goal of tonight's contest, working out there with Megan Meskill. Meskill's been out there for a long time on this shift. The junior out of Minneapolis. Puck center around the boards. Cara Violet in the first line out there for Holy Cross. Violet has an assist. 25 points now on the year for the freshman. Out top for Hall. Hall to the near side. She's got Panarelli. Panarelli's shot off the skate of Fea. Being cheese, eyes got big. She saw one defender to beat. Lost the puck. Now she'll dump it into the far boards. 
Smith and Fea, both providing some forward check pressure. Back to the near side for Panarelli. Panarelli's pass up ahead for Klimachewski. Klimachewski clears the zone, but Kelsey McIsaac will dump right back in. I think it's probably having their best five-minute section of the game right here late in the second. Yeah, and they're going to come right back down. This is going to be an ice on Holy Cross. Yeah, you said it, Seth. I mean, we're actually seeing some spark in the offensive zone from the Beacon, something that's been missing all day. It's just unfortunate with a four down 4 nothing and a minute to go here in the second period. You know, time is definitely an issue for them now, and they're going to need, I, I still believe, they're going to need a goal here before the end of the second if, if they uh, want an actual chance in the third period. Carlos wins the faceoff back to Curry. Curry trying to hand it off to Sullivan. Sullivan's backhand chance knocks off the skates of one of three Holy Cross players in front of Alexander Stevenson. Klimachewski with a ton of speed tries to bring it through the legs of Kelsey McIsaac. Klimachewski gets the puck right back, skating with it on the far side. Triple teamed, and it's picked up by Sullivan. Sullivan ahead for Curry, who's stripped of the puck. Sullivan gets it right back. Gets it across the center ice line, but that's as far as she'll go. Violet leaving it behind for Baggy. Baggy, cross ice pass, looking to find a teammate in Gustre. Gustre was tied up by McIsaac. It'll come all the way back behind the goal line where it's picked up by Armstrong. Armstrong with Gustre behind her, able to get away for Gustre, at least for the moment. High pass off the boards, knocked down by Monaghan. Brought out by Morissette. Morissette with two trailers. It's a three on two, but right into Stevenson who covers up. Yeah, she was trying to get around the defense, and I think just puck out a little bit in front of her. She had two wingers that were open for the puck. She was trying to make a play and unfortunately moved the puck a little bit too far in front of her. It was an easy save for Stevenson just to cover up and take the draw with 6.9 left in the second. 6.9 seconds to go. Morissette will stay out there working against Kate Riley. Doesn't win the faceoff. Controlled by Taylor McGee. McGee will just try to pin it along the boards for the final two seconds. Holy Cross, two goals in the first, two more in the second. They lead by four. And Matt, if you're looking for bright spots for UMass Boston, it probably starts and stops with Jay Morissette, Kalen Burke, maybe even Cat Armstrong. There haven't been many glimmers of hope if you're a Beacons fan. Well, it's real simple for me. I mean, down 4 nothing at home in the second period. Right now, it's just a pride issue. I mean, you have senior, a lot of juniors and seniors on this team who have worked really hard over the course of four years. And regardless of, of what they do in the playoffs, their season is coming to a close. I mean, it only lasts so long. And I think right now, you it's, it's gut check time. You know, you, you've, you've lost you, you, four wins in the last 10 games. At this point, you need to find a way to at least get some positive. Start with one, get one on the board, get that zero out of there. But in terms of, of game plans, I mean, the Beacons have just been dominated by Holy Cross, really from the drop of the puck in the first period. And we saw the, a glimmer of hope there at the end of the second. They were able to establish a little bit of uh, power in the offensive zone, a few shifts and a few shifts after. And hopefully that's a little bit of momentum going into the third period. On the other side for Holy Cross, a dominant performance thus far. They haven't been playing their best hockey. They lost in the last time out, a 2-0 loss to Franklin Pierce. But the weekend before, a pair of ties against teams that aren't necessarily ECAC East powers. Those two ties, St. Michael's College, the University of New England, University of New England in just their third year as a Division III program. This team wasn't playing necessarily good hockey under Peter Van Buskirk, and their seniors have shown a ton of pride. Probably one of the better performances of the second semester first time that we've had the chance to see them but they're playing some really exhilarating hockey yeah no doubt about it and I think anyone watching the game today is going to recognize this team came out angry I mean they came out looking like they had something to prove we saw that the drop of the I mean five minutes into the game they were already up two nothing they've done nothing but build on that already you know four goal lead here after two and definitely a team that came out looking like they had something to prove and you mentioned that, that pride factor um, I think you're, you're going to see a team that, moving forward, I mean, we talked about momentum all the time. Holy Cross definitely has it. Well, and you talk about the Beacons wanting to get one back. For Holy Cross and for yourself as a former goaltender, Alexander Stevenson wants to shut up. She's got four on the year. It's a chance to add one more to her total. We could talk about this game for the entire intermission show, but we'll, we'll show you some of our regularly scheduled programming. In another episode of Behind the Beacon, as we went inside a women's basketball game day, during the Beacons' victory over Suffolk University two weeks ago. Some interesting stuff as the Beacons actually had a thousand point scorer reach the thousand point mark, Olivia Murphy, one of the juniors on this year's roster.
right? 14 and 21 are sisters. They're very, very similar players. They're long, athletic guards, okay? 21, they should have a little bit of everything. They play hard on both ends, right? Our keys limit their transition. Make this a half court game with our offense execution and taking care of the ball, right? Make them defend us, I already said this. And then attack mentality. All right, we haven't, we haven't been together in two days. You haven't played ball in two days. You guys should have some energy. Go at them from the start. Dictate what we do. Don't let them dictate what we do. Let's go. Come on, go get away. Play hard. One, two, three, play hard. And that's what we need you to do as the inbounder. What's up? Like they're just being there, so the other guards are going to come to the ball. Whoever's Whoever is the opposite, yes, has to come and flash hard to the ball. Point win, UMass Boston improved to 14 and 9 overall against the Rams and finished off their non-conference schedule with an 8 and 3 record. The Beacons look to finish off their regular season strong as they aim to host their second home playoff game in program history. For Behind the Beacon, I'm Haley Dutton. Looking at the statistics through two periods, they're a little bit more representative of the scoreboard. Holy Cross. Looking at the scoring summary, scored 323 into the first period. It was Francesca Panarelli from Cara Violet and Mary Klimachewski. 29 seconds later, Nicole Giannino made it 
off a pass from Megan Sullivan. Then 4.06 into the second was an unassisted goal from Madison Snyder. Followed up her own shot and put home the rebound. Finally, the fourth goal, one of the nicer goals of the day. Kate Riley tipped home an Aaron Hall shot from the point. Francesca Panarelli picked up the second assist. Panarelli, the captain, with the goal and an assist in this one. We'll check out the team statistics right now through two periods of play. Holy Cross out shooting UMass Boston 11-6 in the period. They're now leading the Beacons 22-16 through two periods. Kalen Burke with 16 saves on 20 shots. Alexandra Stevenson pitching the shutout thus far with 16 saves, looking for a fifth shutout of the year. UMass Boston 0 for 2 thus far on the power play. Holy Cross had one chance in that second period. They went 0 for 1. Faceoffs thus far favoring Holy Cross. They're 20 of 33. The Beacons with 13 faceoff wins. The only players above 500, Alyssa Sullivan and Alexa Capione, both at 1 for 1. Check out the highlights from the men's basketball game on Wednesday. The Beacons earned their first win here at the Clark Athletic Center Gymnasium since 2005-2006 against UMass Dartmouth. They broke up a six-game losing streak against their conference foe, 79-75. That one from Wednesday. Beacons back in action tomorrow at 3 p.m. as they host Plymouth State University. It's the 68th all-time meeting between UMass Boston and UMass Dartmouth and the 66th time that Charlie Titus and Brian Baptiste will face off on opposite sides of the court. And providing some full court pressure. Ulysses gets by Abraham and Robinson. Up ahead to Joseph, the two-hand slam. Rosanna's across. Long three from Gankos. Nothing but net. John Gankos showing off the range that time. Another name in a 95-68 to 68 win. He could be a big addition to this team here in the second half. Medina finds his way to the hole, flips it up and in. And we'll see Agnor check back in for most likely three minutes in the next whistle. Benavicha, a strong play, and gets the finish. Four. Neither team has been able to extend it out past the two possession game. Abraham blocked by Agnor. Rebound loose, picked up by Robinson. Laga swings it around. Three for Borges falls. And it's a one point game once again. Over to Borges. Borges leaves it off for Abraham. Six foot jumper. Another minute. Largest lead of the game for UMass Dartmouth. 24 on the shot clock. The Beacons have a chance to cut this back to a single possession game. Benavicha goes hard. The floater, no good. Agnor finds the rebound. The acrobatic finish, and he gets the fall. Second leading score. He's just got four points. See Leo Medina check in. Most likely for Young. Young comes away with the turnover. Robinson threw it right to him. Joseph the two-hand slam. And it's a one-point game once again. He's got four rebounds. Medina leaves it off for Agnor. He can shoot the three, but pass it up on this occasion. He'll take the long two instead. And it falls. The big man having himself another big game. Abraham backing down Agnor. Stripped away by Benavicha. Two-on-one run. It's Ulysses leaving it off for Joseph. Gets the finish. And the Beacons lead all of a sudden by five. Young hits one of two once again. It's a six-point advantage, 30 seconds to go. Plenty of three-point shooters on this Dartmouth roster. Gankos with Benavicha hand in his face. Takes it anyway. Somehow manages to get it to fall. Abraham and Resendez struggles to get it out. Gets it to Lager. Contested three over Agnor. Abraham gets a hand on it. Into the hands of Young. Young ahead for Ulysses. Ulysses can't make the catch. The ball's loose. No call. Resendez long three. Front rim no good. Into the hands of Ulysses. And Ulysses gets the foul. Boston. Abraham inbounding it to Robinson. UMass Dartmouth needs contact. Over to Abraham. To Resendez. Resendez over Agnor. It's no good. The Beacons pull the upset. UMass Boston 79. UMass Dartmouth 75. Beacons with that big win over the Corsairs. UMass Boston came in at 2-8 and eight in conference play in that one. UMass Dartmouth was 8-2, and two, but the Beacons with a pair of big victories in basketball. UMass Boston will look to make it two in a row for both the men's and the women's team as we take a look around Beaconville right now. That's our ECAC scoreboard as our producers, they've been working already for a couple hours. They've got a couple hours more to go. We'll try to get them a... a 
shot of something. Uh, looking at the round Beaconville, men's hockey hosts St. Michael's College tonight at 7 p.m. The Beacons playing their final two games of the season here at home as the men's ECAC's tournament will actually start a week before the women's tournament. And then the indoor track and field team will take part in the Little East Conference championship meet tomorrow starting at 10 a.m. Let's take a look at the ECAC scoreboard right now. Manhattanville leads New England College 1-0. Manhattanville, another one of those teams where they've looked good at points, but they've struggled with the bad teams. Matt, looking at the potentially the upset of the regular season, Southern Maine leads Norwich 1-0. Norwich coming into today 14-4-2 on the year, fourth best in the, co in the country, 11-0-1. They've yet to lose a, a conference game. That would be a shocking upset. Yeah, that'd be... I, I've, I've never seen it. You know, I, I've been here four years. I've never seen Southern Maine at, at, even keeping it one nothing into the third period. I mean, that would that would shake up not only the ECAC conference, but really even the national poll. Norwich being the number one country in the or number one team in the entire country, um, that would shake everything up. Well, this is the women's scoreboard, but I don't think I've seen it either side. Southern Maine beating Norwich in men's or women's. Norwich normally a top five team on both sides. Southern Maine normally the bottom of the conference, but very good for that program up there in Southern Maine. As we'll take a look right now at our looking ahead, we've got 15 seconds to go before the start of the second. Last two games of the regular season right there, a pair of home games. Saturday will be senior day. Matt, it's do or die time right now if you're the Beacons. Yeah, we talked about it going in. I mean, it's just gut check time. And, and we have a bunch, we mentioned a bunch of upperclassmen here. This really comes down to a pride issue, especially this late in the season, down four nothing at home. I mean, what are you going to do? Are you going to roll over and let this game get out of hand and get blown out of your own building? Are you going to make a statement? There's no such thing as moral victories at this point in the season, but you got to start with something. Puck control by Holy Cross in their own end as the Beacons, for the first time to start a period, win the faceoff and put some pressure on. Sullivan off the post and ends up behind the net, but what's the Sullivan creating a great chance? This line that was put together before practice yesterday is Kalen Burke. Great glove save on a line drive shot out off the stick of Klimachewski. Curry, Carlos, and Sullivan, they've done some nice things today for UMass Boston. Yeah, especially there. That's a good way to start the period. Get in the offensive zone. Sullivan got that puck behind Stevenson, just wasn't able to get it past the goal line. And a good opportunity for the Beacons. Might have been their best of the day. Panarelli, the senior captain, sends it down low. Looking for Nicole Giannino. Now she'll take a hard shot, looking for her second of the day. Sent wide of the net. Suzanne Meek, the Beacons' other captain, appearing in just her seventh game of the season, 57th career appearance for the senior out of South Hackensack, New Jersey. Sent behind the net, controlled by Hall. Hall onto the stake of Abenanti. Abenanti fighting to get it ahead for Nicole Giannino. Kept in by Armstrong, and Stevenson will settle it for Aaron Hall. Got a stoppage for a delayed offsides, I believe. I think Meek was trying to provide some forecheck pressure, so. Yeah, I didn't see it either. It definitely is an offsides, though, coming out of the zone. A lot of times what can happen is if the play continues and the Beacons continue to stay in, uh, sustain pressure. And here's Smith a shot on Fea, goal. And it's Stevenson with the save. As Kayla Smith won the faceoff forward, had Faya coming in from the left. Those players with great chemistry alongside Ali Bianchini on that third line. And UMass Boston already with two pretty good chances in the first minute 30 of period number three. Faya tries to get it over to Bianchini. Instead, it's onto the stick of Megan Sullivan. Kat Armstrong tries to track it down, able to turn, and she will chip it out of the zone. This will go for an icing if it gets there. Instead, it's Megan Meskill. bringing it back. Neskill around the boards for Kelsey Goostray. Goostray out the center ice. Kelsey McIsaac whiffs on the potential dump. Ken Armstrong forced to give it back over to McIsaac where it's played by Taylor McGee. McGee backhand dump into the Beacons end where Cat Armstrong has some time. She'll turn, put it onto the stick of Bianchini who's forced to give it up. And that's Gogan providing some four check pressure. Isaac around the boards looking for Smith. Smith tried to dump it past the Holy Cross player. Gets it right back. Will dump it from just short of center ice, but right into the skates 
of Izzy Baggy. Baggy, a second team all conference player and an all rookie pl team player in the ECAC East Conference as a freshman. Her number is a little bit down from a year ago with 13 points after a 15 point freshman campaign. 17 17 to go in regulation here on Friday the 13th. It's not been kind to UMass Boston. Fell behind 2 0 in the first four minutes. Holy Cross, two goals in the first, two more in the second. And that's how we've gotten here. Francesca Panarelli, the senior captain thus far, the lone player with two points. Controlled by Alexa Capio, looking for Sullivan. Couldn't put it on her stick. Dumped in by Taylor McGee. And McGee will head to the bench alongside Izzy Baggies. The Beacons had a chance if they could get it out quick, but now the two new defensemen out there. And a nice job by Aaron Hall to break up a Beacons rush. Remember, this is game one of our doubleheader. The Beacons men's team will host St. Michael's College. It's a lot of purple coming into the Clark today. Although St. Michael's College not quite as royal in their purple as Holy Cross. As we've got a dump. And that the second game today should promise to have a little bit more offense than today's first game, at least if you're a Beacons fan. Yeah, it should be a good game. And St. Mike's gave uh, UMass Boston a run for their money at home. I believe the game went to overtime. UMass ended up winning, but should be a good one here today, especially the last weekend of the regular season for the men's team. Yep. That first game was a 5-4 overtime win for the Beacons up in Colchester, Vermont. In fact, the last three meetings, UMass Boston has needed some late comebacks to avoid losing to St. Mike's. A nice save from Burke on a point-blank shot from Klimachewski. Klimachewski still fighting for it, taking on two Beacons, and she's fully capable of doing that. Seen it several times today. Out there with Boardman and Violette. Up top, it's a hard shot from Hall. Top shelf, that's goal number five. Erin Hall with a blast. Her first goal of the season, third career goal. What a shot there. Just underneath the bar, rang off the crossbar to make it 5-0 with 15-51 to play. Erin Hall out of Pembroke, Massachusetts with an absolute laser labeled top corner. Seth, I'm not even going to lie, that might have gotten it on me, my best day. I mean, that was an absolute bomb to the top corner, one-timer from the blue line. Unbelievable. Aaron Hall with a goal to make it 5-0 Holy Cross. A tremendous play. That's the second goal from a Holy Cross defenseman today. In fact, she's playing alongside Francesca Panarelli. Both defensive uh, players on that pairing have goals today as the assist will go to Panarelli. She's got a three-point day. Pass in front, broken up there. Emily Listener was looking for a shot. And Mackenzie Boardman will get the second assist. So that's the first assist for Boardman, the junior out of Anchorage, Alaska. All three players in that first line now have an assist. And for those of you who don't know, Matt Meisenmacher, a former member of the men's hockey team, played goalie with the team for his first three seasons. And Matt, I don't know how many goalies are going to stop that one, period. Hall with a tremendous effort to make it 5-0, and that's the fourth goal for Holy Cross within the first five minutes of a period. Talk about coming out of the locker room jacked up. I don't know what Peter Van Buskirk has said to his team, but they're clearly playing some better hockey after their longest winless streak of the season at three games. Pass in front looking for Giannino. Giannino had it broken up by Cat Armstrong. That's some 27 on 27 crime and it's out into the neutral zone where it'll be put right back in by Izzy Baggy. Well coaches always talk about playing a full 60 minutes and granted there's 14 minutes left here but really for Holy Cross I mean they have come in here and executed on their game plan beautifully. You see it evidence on the scoreboard 5-0 and just really been able to swallow UMass Boston in all three zones and all facets of the game. Talk about playing a full 60 minutes I don't think the Beacons have played more than a, a solid eight or nine minutes through the first 45 here. For UMass Boston, the least you can do is try to pick up the intensity a little bit here late as Kayla Smith had that pass end up in her jersey and was able to find it before Holy Cross could come away with another good look in front of Kaylin Burke. Burke had 16 saves through the first two periods. She's made some really nice plays to keep this game as close as it was through two. Smith onto the stick of Faya. Faya skating with a little bit of speed up that far side. She's stripped to the puck by Panarelli. Now Jane Morissette joins the rush. Morissette trying to get around Aaron Hall. Morissette still with it. will leave it off for Salisbury. Salisbury pinching in, leaving it back for Morissette. She'll take a shot, but it's right into the legs of Aaron Hall. Hall out in front. 
onto the stick this time of Madison Snyder, who has a goal today. It's knocked away by Capion. Capion over to Embry, who puts the puck in a dangerous position. Tempted shot there off the stick of Sullivan is knocked down. Salisbury trying to clear the zone, unable to do so. Kept in by Jessica for Scotty. set looking to make a move. Instead, she turns it over, backhand chance, and Gogan is robbed there by Kalen Burke. Yeah, great save by Burke there in the slot. And it was on the backhand, which allowed Burke to get enough time to get over and make a nice save. And the rebound was fortunately enough going into the corner. Nice save by Burke there. Puck play behind the net. Over to Alexa Capion. Capion looking to get it out. Another nice play by Gogan. This fourth line has done a nice job in limited shifts today. Pass onto the stick of Meek. Meek looking to get it ahead for Embry, who started today on the first line. She's been replaced on that first line with Alan Ardo moving up to play alongside Morissette and Barry. Now it's Klimachewski playing one on three, as she's been prone to do today. Armstrong up ahead, pass a little bit behind Alan Ardo. Alan Ardo will play it behind the net. Meek, the lone player, putting some four check pressure in on Izzy Baggy. Baggy around the net, up ahead for Boardman. Boardman's pass ahead for Klimachewski, couldn't quite get there. Tapped away by McIsaac. Brought into the zone by McGee. McGee, soft little dumping. Kelsey McIsaac will take the time given to her. Looking to make a move. Loses the puck right in front of Burke, and Burke will cover up. And now she'll give it back to McIsaac as Holy Cross didn't seem to notice the miscue by the senior on the Beacons. Howard stripped of the puck, but right onto the stick of Armstrong. Armstrong looking to weave her way through traffic. She's got the red line into the zone. Armstrong the shot, Stevenson the save and she'll escort the rebound over to the near boards. Howard in amongst two purple shirts. Izzy Baggy controlling. Baggy backhand flip over to Klimachewski. Puck loose just outside the circle. Touched over to the near side where it's picked up by Carabite Violette. Violette doesn't have a goal today. Does have 10 on the season. Works her way all the way in, and she's stopped by Kalen Burke. Rebound loose. Burke couldn't cover up. It's over to the far boards. Curry's pass way too far ahead for Carlos. Over to the near side, Panarelli and Boardman right there, and Boardman will flip it back into the Beacon's end. Just barely avoided a couple of Beacon sticks on the bench. Capion couldn't find it. Giannino just onto the ice, sends out in front. Hard shot, Burke the save as she robbed Abenanti. Abenante, rather. Curry unable to find the puck, played in by Panarelli. Curry at her own blue line, over to Jess Salisbury. 10.37 to go in what has been a miserable showing by the Beacons, trailing by five. Kayla Smith over to Curry. Curry shot tipped high. Didn't look like it was going to make it on target either way. Sullivan can't find it. Some nice stick handling there by Giannino. Goes off the stick of Kayla Smith. Smith will flip it back to Armstrong. Armstrong in a ton of pressure, somehow able to get it over to Lauren Tanzi. Lauren Tanzi stripped to the puck, controlled by Avenante. Abenante over to Giannino. This second line's been good. The first line's been good. Really, everyone's been good for Holy Cross. Chance for Faya. A little bit of interference there from a Holy Cross player who didn't let Faya by. And Matt, you immediately put your hand up. I agree, but referee's not giving the Beacons the benefit of the call this time. UMass Boston 0 for 2 on the man advantage thus far. Yeah, it was Be clear interference in my book. And Stevenson, though, did a great job to break up the chance potentially take the referee's eyes away from the interference by coming well out of her net to give her defenders a little bit of help. It's Meskill. Meskill from the circle. Shot deflected high. Wraparound chance by Monahan as she swerved and tried to put it in on Burke. Sent off the side of the cage. Armstrong slips the ice after getting it out of the zone. Turnover leads to a two-on-one. It's Meskill with the player out in front. That's McGee, and Burke makes the save. McGee really couldn't get anything on it. That's a pair of defensemen creating a great two-on-one chance. Yeah, yeah, you just never see this, and, and Burke is, is she's, they're leaving her out to dry here. I mean, she's had a ton of saves in the third period, and a credit to her, down 5 nothing, continuing the battle. Well, that just says a lot about Kaylin Burke. She came into UMass Boston never expecting to play, was a third-string goaltender her first two years. Last year, she split time amongst Casey Scheibe, and Mo Bradley for the first half and then went back to her third string goaltender duties. But this year with Shivey out for the year, red shirting due to an injury, she split time the whole season with Mo Bradley. He's actually been the Beacon's best goaltender statistically. Pass out in front, deflected wide. Baggy will take a whack at it, high shot. Nice job with the blocker from Kalen Burke to knock that one down. 
Biancini trying to slip it back to a teammate to create a rush. Instead, she's pinned along the boards, and Holy Cross will keep it in the offensive zone. Morissette able to clear, but this rolling puck should go for an icing. And UMass Boston, just as they've been for the past three minutes, back in their own end. Yeah, Seth, we're seeing two different teams here. Holy Cross is a team that looks fully prepared for the playoffs. The team that's come in today has not only stuck to the game plan and executed it, but done so so efficiently. They're continuing it here in the third period, and UMass Boston just hasn't been on the same page, haven't really been able to get anything going today. Two opposite polar ends today, and, and a surprising 5-0 lead in the third period at home, in my opinion. Well, you talk about Holy Cross. They're not eligible to play in the ECAC East tournament as a non-Division three team. But there's an ECAC Open tournament since there are so few Division II and Division I programs, it's not sponsored by a conference like the men's side is with the Northeast 10 tournament, a couple of Division II teams that will play. The past three seasons, Holy Cross has fallen in the championship game to St. Anselm College. This is a chance for Holy Cross and these 11 seniors to win some hardware. They've fallen short in the ECAC East standings. They haven't won a regular season crown, as now it's a chance for Klimachewski broken up by the Beacons. But this team, they have something to play for. It might not be a national title, but still some hardware. And we're seeing a Holy Cross team that clearly is looking to rev up their play heading into their tournament that will start in two weeks as we've got a high stick call. Yeah, it's going to be a check on McIsaac. She threw a little bit of a shoulder into Neskill there behind the net, and she's going to go for two minutes on the check. But you're right, Seth, and I think, you know, it's a credit to Holy Cross and that definitely something to play for. And, you know, with UMass Boston, I mean, it's not like the season's ending tonight. I mean, they, they definitely still have some games left and obviously in, in all likelihood will make the playoffs. It's just a matter of, you know, tonight is a matter of pride and moving forward, it's a matter of how bad do you want it. We're seeing two teams and, and a UMass Boston team that, in my opinion, just a little bit in shambles right now. Taylor McGee up top on the power play. Her shot knocked down. Sullivan leaves it ahead for Carlos. Carlos giving chase. Sullivan the trailer takes the long shot. Easy play for Stevenson with a minute 40 to go on the man advantage. For the Beacons, it's Sullivan, Carlos, Armstrong, and Salisbury. UMass Boston only dressed five defensemen. They only have four available right now with McIsaac in the box. Carlos will head to the bench, leaving Sullivan out there as the lone forward. She'll be replaced by Emily Howard. Giannino over across for Baggy. Baggy will play it behind the net. First player to it is Salisbury. Salisbury plays it off the boards for Armstrong. Armstrong, some fancy stick work to send it the length of the ice, where Stevenson will slow it down. And you mentioned it before, Seth, Armstrong has looked good all night. She's been around the puck, and she's one of the few Beacons who I've actually been impressed with her play. She looked good there. You saw her on the clear. It was able to get it 200 feet. Mackenzie Boardman across for Francesca Panarelli. The senior captain has a three-point day, a goal and two assists. Second year as the captain for Van Buskirk. McGee over across the baggy is Holy Cross will get a change with the puck in the Beacons end. Tempted deflection there from Giannino. And now the Beacons trying to push Giannino out of the way. Howard got into it with Giannino. McGee over to the far circle, hard shot from Baggy, knocked down by Armstrong, and she's feeling it a little bit there as she slowly gets off the ice. Yeah, that one might have caught her in a spot, coming off the ice a little bit lame, but she seems to be okay. Yeah, it looks like it was just over the skate. Fortunately, it's a short change there for Armstrong. 15 seconds to go on the man advantage for Holy Cross. They're 0 for 1 on the day. It's about the only thing that hasn't worked out for Holy Cross. Kayla Smith trying for a shorthand chance over to Bianchini, but Bianchini couldn't knock it down. Down to three seconds, and that'll do it for the man advantage. Smith in the circle, shot knocked down. Baggy giving up the body despite being up 5 0. Now a shot wide from Lauren Tanzi. UMass Boston creating two good chances there right at the end of the power play. Capione can't find it over to Michaela Fea. Third line out there for the Beacons. Fea still fighting after it. Smith gets her stick on it with five minutes to play. The Beacons gave up two in the first, two in the second. The lone goal here in the third came from Aaron Hall. Six, five rather different goal scores. Hall looking for a second. Burke just gets a bit of that one with her shoulder and it's up into the netting for a stoppage in play. Seth, the one stat I would really like to see tonight is time of possession. I mean, it, I think the discrepancy there is gonna be huge. We've seen Holy Cross dominate in terms of possession of the puck the entire game. And I, I guarantee you at the end of the game, I would, I would, I would make a bet 90% to 10%. 90 
Well, we're going to try to avoid betting. That's not something the NCAA really <laughs> likes to talk about. But I think the more fitting stat would not be time of possession, but time in your opponent's zone. The Beacons have constantly been pressed into their own zone and haven't been able to get out. They've had the puck, but time of possession in your own zone is not a stat that anyone's ever going to be happy about. Sometimes it's a good thing not to have as much possession. You try to play a counterattack game. Beacons haven't had too many good counterattack chances, as Jane Mar has said, who's been one of the better players for UMass Boston today, wins the faceoff. Armstrong over to Meek. Meek finds Marisek, cross ice pass over to Alan Ardo. Alan Ardo from the circle, her shot right into the body of Panarelli, who's done a nice job on both ends of the ice. Kustray tried to flip it by a beacon right at her own blue line. It was knocked down and finally gets into the beacon's end with Armstrong controlling. Four minutes to go in this one. This one was wrapped up pretty much within the first four minutes the way the beacons have played. Two goals in 29 seconds from Holy Cross. Francesca Panarelli and Nicole Giannino. In the second period it was Schneider and Riley and Aaron Hall has added a fifth. Is some good forechecking pressure from Madison Schneider to force the cover up from Kalen Burke. And while we've been a little bit disappointed in the play of the Beacons from start to finish today, it, you have to remember that Holy Cross deserves a ton of credit for the way they've been able to generate 60 minutes of consistent pressure. Sullivan here looking to make something happen. Absolutely. They're still doing it, Seth. I mean, you, you look at them here. I mean, they're just swarming the puck, and any time they get possession of it, they're looking to do something offensively, move it north. You see them here in the defensive zone. Two passes, and they'll be in the neutral zone. And Holy Cross defensive core might be the best that I've seen all season long in the women's game. They do such a nice job of helping out on offense. We've seen two goals from them. Megan Sullivan has an assist. Izzy Baggy originally was credited with an assist. This group has been really offensive, but they don't leave Alexander Stevenson out to dry either. No, they've been good in all facets of the zone, all three zones, and you saw, you, you mentioned the scoring. It's been well spread. It hasn't been one line. It's been all four. Curry gets tripped up as she made her way into the zone. That'll be a penalty coming against Holy Cross once they get a touch-up. First, it's Sullivan trying to keep control of it. Over to Curry. Curry sends it in, but Stevenson able to make the save. Kayla Smith couldn't get out in front in time. And UMass Boston will have potentially one last chance to get a goal on the day. 2.50 to play. The Beacons trailing by five. And here's where I'm at with it, Seth. Personally, if I'm at home, I'm down 5 nothing, not looking like this is going to be a win, I want to get that zero off the scoreboard. That's just a pride issue. Getting shut out at home is something that should never happen. If I'm, if I'm a UMass Boston women's hockey player, I want to get that zero off the board. UMass Boston tried to get Alexandra Carlos on late. Instead, they're going to keep Armstrong there. Bianchini, Fea, and Smith, the forward. Salisbury and Armstrong, the defenseman, as Salisbury sends a pass into the circle. It's flipped out of the zone by Aaron Hall. Matt, would you go as far as to take Kalen Burke out at this point, trying to get the two-man advantage as Bianchini flips it right in, and Hall gets another clear with... Carlos now out there in favor of Armstrong. I think that's a little bit extreme pulling the goaltender, but at this point, I mean, it's just put it on your players. Find a way to get a goal here. Fea over to Salisbury. Salisbury leaves it for Carlos with heavy forechecking pressure. UMass Boston got off to such a great start to the year. They were averaging three-plus goals per game. They were scoring them in boatloads. But here in the second half, the Beacons have just not been the same team. They haven't scored in their past two games. A 5-0 shutout against Salve Regina University last Saturday. And the Beacons on the verge of potentially being shut out for the fourth time this season, the second time in back-to-back -back games. Bianchini over to Smith as the Beacons really haven't been able to set up during this power play. Smith tries to split the double team, able to do so, has the puck along the far circle. Over to Bianchini, finds a cutting Smith, but it's knocked away behind the net. Bianchini working against Meskill, giving up about a foot and a half. At least it seems. She's not quite that short, but Meskill just a looming presence there. Now it's Fea around Cara Violet. Fea working 1v4, leaves it off. Embry's shot goes wide. A nice job by Embry to get to the front of the net. Couldn't finish. Armstrong back out there with 25 to go. Armstrong couldn't really see past Mackenzie Boardman, and her pass intercepted. Marisette coming back to get it with a minute and five to go in the game. Marisette's pass onto the 
skate of Sullivan. Marasek went over to get it. Played behind the net with nine seconds to go on the man advantage. Marasek tried to pin it along the boards. Played behind the net. Sullivan tries to flip it for Marasek. Whiffs on the one-timer and it's brought out of the zone. Here by Riley. Riley trying to dish it out in front to Gustre. Embry over to Curry as the man advantage is over. 23 seconds to go in the, rather 37 seconds to go in the contest. Puck behind the net, Monahan laying it over to McGee. McGee out in front for Riley. Riley will leave it for Gustre. Gustre poke checked away by McIsaac. McIsaac plays it behind Kristen Embry. Dumped in on Burke who will add another save to her tally. 10 seconds left in regulation. Salisbury playing it behind for McIsaac. Around the boards for Embry. Five seconds now. Embry over to McIsaac. The Beacons trying to clear just one last time and McIsaac will. A 5-0 victory for the College of the Holy Cross over UMass Boston. We came in talking about the past four matchups. Both teams with six goals. A pair of one goal games a year ago. Two ties the year before. This one wasn't so close. No, this doesn't really follow suit of the way these games have gone in the past. Usually they're much closer and definitely a tendency for them to be very close going into the third period. A few of them even heading into overtime. Tonight we just wasn't, you know, it's a credit to Holy Cross. You mentioned it before. A team that came ready to play. They looked angry. They looked like they had something to prove all night. and really took it to UMass uh, for 60 minutes. We're going to take a commercial break here in the Beacons Broadcast Network. Then we'll bring you the final stats and the three stars and I don't want to let you know too much right now, but it, you're going to see a lot of Crusaders on those three stars from today's contest. Something I discovered in myself is that if I have a goal, I can accomplish it. It's a well-rounded experience. At a Division three school, you primarily a student athlete, so the school is really shaped around you developing yourself as a complete individual. It helps a lot that you have a family with your team that can guide you. UMass Boston was my first choice because when I came to the campus I saw that there was a lot of diversity, there's a lot of people. Um, here there's a lot of international students so it's really cool to meet people from different countries, different parts of the world. I'm Julia Murphy, I'm from Canton, Massachusetts. I'm Olivia Murphy, I'm from Canton, Massachusetts. We're sisters. We're sisters. <laughs> I play volleyball and she plays basketball. Here they have a freshman success community, so each major has their own community that you can join as a freshman and you take classes with them, you do study groups with them. So it was really helpful getting to know people in your major right away. So in health exercise sciences we have an internship at the end or it's so much better to have like an advisor helping you out, like telling you which classes to choose. Jake. As usual, she wins it. A chance in front. Her shot is in the net. Crystal related. Yet another goal. Please make a gift to the Beacon Athletic Fund today. We want you on our team. I did receive a non-athletic scholarship upon entering uh, school. I got the presidential scholarship, which was huge for me. I think there's more opportunities for academic scholarships in Division Three. I did receive academic scholarships. Just being involved on campus, being a leader, all those things combined kind of get me recognized. It's a great experience for me. The University of Massachusetts Boston, with its scenic oceanfront campus, easily accessible to downtown Boston, is recognized as a model of excellence for urban public universities. 16 NCAA Division III sports are part of the more than 100 student organizations that create an engaging campus life in America's biggest and best college town. UMass Boston, Boston's urban public research university for the 21st century. Paris changed my life. 
and I got there through UMass. Those very specific seminal moments in Paris, the subway. A man in a tuxedo walked in and a woman in a long gown, and it was stunning. It all hit me. It was, it was like a lightning bolt. There was this world of beauty and style that I wanted to be a part of. That was the beginning of the journey. And that all came through the University of Massachusetts. And that was really a key moment for me. That's one of those moments you never forget. The University of Massachusetts, Boston. It's just minutes from downtown, and the Princeton Review calls it one of the best values in the country. A nationally recognized institution of academic excellence and research, UMass Boston offers more than 150 undergraduate and graduate programs, 16 Division III sports, and more than 100 student organizations. To learn more about the opportunities waiting for you at UMass Boston, visit in person or online. UMass Boston, a research university with a teaching soul. Welcome back for the final time here on the Beacons Broadcast Network. It was a dominant showing from start to finish. Holy Cross, two in the first, two more in the second, and one final goal in the third, a 5-0 victory. Holy Cross improving to 13-6-3, 9-3-2 in ECAC East play. The Beacons back under 500, 9-10-4, 6-7-3. Two games left in the regular season. One team right in the ship today, one team We'll need to do so next weekend. Let's check out the final statistics from today's game. And Matt, they look kind of lopsided. They probably should have been even more lopsided the way Holy Cross played today. No, there's no doubt about it. I mean, look at the stack column. There's really not much to say there for the for the UMass Boston side. But from the Holy Cross side, I mean, you see the 30 shots on goal. I mean, it, it kind of sticks to what we saw in the pregame. You know, a lot of shots on goal ability to score goals as well and ability to keep the puck out of the net. I mean, that's a great combo. If you're a Holy Cross fan, something to build upon, being able to score goals and not allow the opposition to score very much. So definitely something to build on for the Crusaders. Yeah, shots in that third period, 10 to 3, as we'll check out our three stars right now. First star, Francesca Panarelli. It's kind of a no-brainer, the captain. A goal and two assists, three-point day. She was phenomenal. Alexander Stevenson, though, 19 saves in the contest. And she made this... She kept this game from being interesting at all because it never seemed as if the Beacons were really threatening Stevenson. Yeah, she kept it real simple in net, and you see there, fifth shot out of the year. You know who made a, a living doing that? One of the, probably the greatest goaltender of all time, Marty Brodeur. A lot of games he faced about 20 shots, and I grew up watching him. He faced about 20 shots, keep it real simple. That's how he stacked up so many shutouts, and you see it here, fifth shot out of the year for Stevenson. Played well, kept it simple all night. We'll check out our Beacons Broadcast Network crew list. They did a tremendous job today. It's not always easy broadcasting a shutout, broadcasting a blowout either, but so much thanks to Elizabeth Glavin and Jose Pena, our directors, Matt Meisenmacher, my great color guy. My name is Seth Doransky, and of course, our camera operators, Ryan Augustine, Charles LaPaglia, and Kyle Thibodeau. They worked with us all season long, doing a great job. We'll look ahead at the Meekin schedule. Two games left, Matt, and if you mass Boston can't get some traction going, it doesn't matter whether they host a home playoff game next weekend or not, uh, in two weekends or not, it, it, it's not going to matter. These two games as pivotal as the Beacons have had all season long. Yeah, and it just comes, to, it, we said it all game, especially in the third period. It's a pride issue at this point. We saw a team in the first half of the season that was looking like a senior team and had a lot of leadership. We just have not seen that four wins in their 11 games here in the second half. It's just not going to cut it. And Fortunately, though, you, you know, you, you learn from this, you move on. Hopefully with two games left in the season, especially with senior night coming up, a little bit of that pride can, can be salvaged and get a little bit of momentum going into the uh, playoff season. Well, that'll do it for us here at the Beacons Ice Arena. Holy Cross 5, UMass Boston 0. That's your final. Both teams are off tomorrow. They won't be back in play until next Friday. Holy Cross hosts Nichols in Norwich next weekend. The Beacons hosting Franklin Pierce and the University of New England. Thanks so much to our crew. And we'll be back in about an hour if you're a big Beacons fan as the men's hockey team ranked 6th last 7th in the country hosts St. Michael's College at the 7 p.m. start.